Our third lecture in Project Decision Rules deals with the Payback Rule. Our goals here are to describe the Payback Rule and calculate the payback for a sample project, and then sort of discuss the pros and cons of the Payback Rule. The Payback Rule basically describes how long does it take to recover your initial investment. It's a great rule for an entrepreneur because it basically says how long is my own personal money tied up in this business before I can start making profits and I'm no longer concerned about a bank loan. So payback period is measured in time and typically we think of it in years so it's the number of years required to recover the initial cost. The problem with payback is there's no universal criteria for what is good or bad payback. It varies from firm to firm. And then also, it kind of ignores what happens after you pay the project off. So a firm could have a project where we pay off our initial investment, and then the project doesn't do much after that. So payback wouldn't capture that as the problem. So let's look at an example. So a project requires a $100,000 investment today. So essentially, payback says how many years will it take to recover the $100,000. Investors in the project would like a 10% return on their investment. With payback, that doesn't really matter because it ignores the time value of money. It treats every dollar earned in the project at the same valuation. So here we go. So we invest 100000 today. Three years of cash flows are 50000 50000 and 40000 How long does it take to recover the, the full 100000 As I say here in the notes, you probably have already saw this in the head, but let's form in your head, excuse me, but let's formalize this answer. The way I like to do payback is I create a little table. Uh, the first row is just the project cash flows. So you see there I have year zero, one, two, and three, and the first row underneath it, I have the actual cash flows for the project. So we have our one hundred thousand dollar investment at time zero. Then I have our fifty thousand dollar cash flow in year one and year two. And then I have our $40,000 cash flow at year three. Now the row below it that I have labeled net cash just tracks our net cash position to pay the project back. So when we start the project, we're $100,000 in the hole. That's how much I need to recover. In the first year, if you look at our cash flow row, we make $50,000. Well, after one year, I started the year $100,000 negative. I make $50,000 back, so my net position after one year is negative $50,000. I still haven't paid the project back. In year two, we make $50,000 again. Well, at the end of year two, I started the year at negative $50,000. I make $50,000 during the year. At the end of year two, I don't owe any more on my initial investment, so the project has paid itself back. Let's look at this summary of these calculations on the next slide. Now the problem we see here is we have a payback of two years, but we don't know if that's good or bad. So it's kind of a personal preference on whether this was a good project or not. So in summary, the strengths here is this is an easy to understand rule. It measures the time you know, we have until we're out of danger of losing our initial investment. It's a good measure of liquidity. So how long is my cash tied up? Straight, great liquidity measure for an entrepreneur. The con is no set criteria. The criteria varies among firms. We ignore what happens post payback. And it also ignores the time value of money. Now a lot of textbooks and, and your textbook in fact will have a follow up rule on this called discounted payback. And with that rule it takes each cash flow and finds the present value of it and then calculates the payback of the project. Well think about what that's doing for a minute. If I find the present value of every cash flow, I'm almost doing net present value. So there's not a lot of added benefit to the discounted payback rule. And that's why I'm not really forcing you to understand it or, or know it for this course. 